The next step up from the classic pen and paper training diary is heart rate. If you're looking for another way to improve your training rides or the way you train, then heart rate can be a super affordable, accessible and adaptable way to improve your sessions. Once you understand the basic principles, using a heart rate monitor can be a great way to train smart and also to your own goals. Yeah, but before we get into that video, I think this is the perfect time to do a poll. Do you at home use heart rate, power meter, or do you just go old school and go data free? Let us know on the poll over on the GCN app. Right, Con, are you ready to get into this video? Let's do yeah. it. So the big question you've got is how on earth do you measure your heart rate? Now there's a load of different ways, but the most common way is using a chest strap. Now what that does is it detects each heartbeat and it transmits it to a head unit like that one. I'm using the Wahoo ticker and it transmits it all the way to my Rome. Another way that's becoming more and more common is optical heart rate. Now you can find this being used in something like a smartwatch like this one, or maybe in an armband, which you'd wear nice and securely right here. Now you need to wear it nice and tight because it uses your blood pressure detecting every single beat to monitor your heart rate. The chest strap is probably the most common one when it comes to cycling, and it's also relatively affordable. Pick up one like this and you can easily connect it to your smartphone via Bluetooth or AMP Plus. And if you get a free app, such as the one we use here, the Wahoo app, then you can start using it with your smartphone on rides. You could also pair it with a bike computer and get current accurate readings of your heart rate and ride to set zones. But more on that in a bit. Yeah, so now you know how to measure it, but what then do you do with it? Now, before we get onto the details, it's important to remember your heart rate is specific to you. Different ages, gender, physiological and environmental changes all will be a determining factor. So don't compare it with other people, keep it to yourself. So before Connor asked me what my heart rate, don't. It's not a useful comparison and it could be dangerous. Okay, I won't ask, I won't yeah. ask James. Don't mate, my heart rate is my heart rate. A good place to start when training with heart rate is your resting heart rate. Yeah, now this is so easily done and it's great because it involves zero training. Now all you have to do is get your resting heart rate when you're super relaxed. Now this is best done before you get out of bed or when you've been lying down for 20 minutes. The more relaxed you are, the more accurate your resting heart rate will be. Now you can do this by finding a pulse on your wrist or on your neck and wait for a minute while counting it and that is your resting heart rate. Or you can use a gadget like a chest strap or a watch. Yeah, it's a brilliant way to manage the fatigue you'll experience during consecutive days of hard training because as you do begin to train harder and harder, your resting heart rate will begin to rise. And then when you recover and rest, that resting heart rate will drop. Also, another thing to bear in mind is if you're experiencing the onset of illness or sickness, then your resting heart rate will actually begin to spike by 10 or 20 beats per minute. And if this is the case, then well, it's a good sign that you need to take things easy and rest up. Okay, the next simple one to understand is your max heart rate. Now, as the name suggests, this is what your heart rate is at when you're going at your absolute maximum. So, a simple way to discover your maximum heart rate is to find a hill. Maybe it takes you five minutes to ride up and you want to ride up it as hard as you can, but at the top, you need to sprint for 20 to 30 seconds. The number your heart rate spikes at is your max. Now, don't say I didn't warn you that this one will hurt because, well, it's a painful one. So you have your resting heart rate and you've got your max heart rate. Now it's time to get your lactate threshold heart rate. Now, this is a point when you really begin to feel lactate in the legs build up dramatically on a ride. That point, when you push that little bit more 
and your legs really start to burn. Oh yes, now why is it important to have your lactate threshold heart rate? Well, we can use it to extrapolate all our zones and intensities that we can ride at because it's all taken from a percentage of that number. When we talk of the zone system or the different zones that we can train at, we are actually talking about how we classify the different intensities that we ride at based on physiological responses that we experience when we train at different levels of effort or intensity. Yeah, now a good idea to work out that lactate threshold heart rate is this exercise now. You're going to need to have a couple of days recovery before you do this effort because it needs to be all out. It needs to be all you've got. So what you have to do is perform a 10 minute warm up. Now this is, has to be a good sufficient warm up. Spin the legs, get your heart rate up and then perform a 30 minute max effort. Now that has to be max. Once you've done that, you take the last 20 minutes of that effort, work out your average heart rate and that number is your lactate threshold heart rate. And that's the number you can work out all your zones with. But yes, it needs to be full gas. Right, here goes. Up, 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 up. Remember to press start. Once you know your lactate threshold, you can now create your training zones. Now, this could enable you to create a training plan which would allow you to really maximize your training and understand how intensely you should train at and for what duration of time. Training zones will also simply allow you to be able to understand how to pace your effort over different distances. So now let's have a look at some of those zones that you want to try and stick to when training, starting off with zone one. Now we are going to show you our own heart rates, but that doesn't have to be comparable to you because they're specific to you individually, because it's all done on a percentage of your own lactate threshold heart rate. Zone one is 70 to 80% of lactate threshold heart rate or LTHR. So for me, that is under 140 beats per minute. This is an active recovery zone and the sort of intensity you do in a nice, easy, gentle spin, maybe the day after a hard session when you want to loosen your legs off. And you wouldn't really want to do this sort of ride for any longer than an hour or two. This is a real gentle spin with your mates, having a conversation. And in terms of how the effort feels, on a scale of perceived effort, it'll be around a two out of 10. So nice and easy. Zone two, 81% to 89% of your lactate threshold heart rate. For me, this is 143 to 156 beats per minute. This is the endurance zone. Zone two, what's it look like? What's it feel like? This is the endurance zone. This is where you can ride for two hours or even more with the right fueling, the right carbohydrate intake. You can also have a conversation and keep regular breathing. It'll feel like two to three out of 10 on the perceived effort scale. So yes, it's a nice zone. And one perfect for a group ride. Ugh, I'm muddy. Zone three, that's 90% to 93% of your lactate threshold heart rate. And for me, that's 157 to 164 beats per minute, a tempo zone. If you're a racing cyclist, this is the zone you'll be used to racing at. Now, conversation will get a little bit harder to hold. And if you're looking to incorporate zone three efforts into a ride, you'll want to do intervals of duration, maybe 30 to 60 minutes. And in terms of perceived effort, this will feel like a three or four out of 10. Now you can do one or two repeated intervals in a ride, but you might start to feel it like I am right now. You can do consecutive days training at zone three, but you'll really need to focus on recovery. Good hydration, fuel correctly and sleep well. Zone four is 94% to 99% of your lactate threshold heart rate. For me, this is 167 to 174 beats per minute. This zone is threshold. These threshold efforts are hard. You're looking for a duration of around 10 minutes all the way to 30. They're gonna feel like a solid climb or going into a time trial effort. And they're also best practiced 
on a climb like this, it's easy to keep that intensity high. And I'm telling you, they're not easy, but they do encourage the right adaptations that you're looking for. And they'll help you progress the train. Oh. It has to be said, these efforts are tough. They're gonna make it hurt. And it's a good idea to be well rested for these sessions when training at this zone. And it's a good idea also to put them at the beginning of your training block. They're gonna feel like a five to six out of 10 on a perceived effort scale. And they're gonna give you faces like that and that. So you want to look at doing these kind of efforts once or twice a week if you're feeling good. And a session I always used to love to do was doing a two to three hour ride and involving two 15 minute efforts with the heart rate within this bracket. It was hard, but boy, was it good training. Ah, that was hard climbing. Zone five, that's 100 to 106% of my lactate threshold heart rate. So 175 to 179 beats per minute for me. And this is your VO2 max zone. Okay, now we're starting to get into the top end of our zones. In zone five, well, you're really only gonna be able to maintain this for four to eight minutes in one effort. And you're really gonna feel the legs burning. The lactate is gonna be high. Now, I'd recommend doing any training in this zone when you're really well rested because well, you're gonna be absolutely exhausted at the end of an effort in this intensity. And if you do it after consecutive days of training, you might even struggle to be able to even get your heart rate up into this zone in the first place. It will take time for your heart rate to rise into this zone. So you will need to be patient. It can take up for a minute for your heart rate to be able to rise at this effort. As mine currently is. Oh. Now on the scale of perceived exertion, this will feel like a seven out of 10. Whew. Zone six and seven, above 106% of your lactate threshold heart rate. For me, this is above 185 beats per minute. Right, you're into zone six. Now this is a really tough one. They're only gonna last from 30 seconds to three minutes. And they balls the wall as hard as you can go. Ah! Zone seven is basically working on your neuromuscular power. So this is where it's short bursts of power. It's a sprint. It lasts about 10 to 15 seconds. Now you won't be able to read your heart rate because it is just too short. But let me put it simply, it's balls to the wall. As hard as you can go. Remember, if you're training to heart rate, you want to aim to start a rep near the bottom of a zone and then let it drift up rather than sprinting to get your heart rate up because you're stressed about not hitting your target heart rate. It will take time for your heart rate to rise and it's not going to happen instantly. It's worth understanding that your heart rate will vary as you progress your training. The simple premise of training is that you will fatigue your body through riding, then you rest, your body adapts, and then you fatigue your body further, push it that little bit more through more training. Yeah, now as you get fatigued after consecutive days of training, you'll find it hard to sit at that higher zones, and you'll even find it hard to get that heart rate that little bit higher. So this is totally normal so don't worry too much about it. Yeah, and what you should be aware of is if you do struggle to get your heart rate above zone two or zone three after consecutive days of training, then what you should bear in mind is it's probably a good time to rest and recover. Have some days off the bike, some active recovery days, and then when you return to training, that is when you'll see those improvements in fitness and performance. Yeah, and you'll come back swinging, won't you? Yeah. Quick out! Let the dog see the bone. So those are your zones, but how do you put it into practice? Now, this comes down to what your goals are, what your needs are. Are you looking to generate more power or are you looking to lose weight? It's important to remember though, to get the best performance and fitness and all round fitness, you need to involve all the heart rate zones. When building this into your training though, you wanna think about building the foundations first though. So the majority of your rides should probably be at zone two and below. Then zone three, maybe look to include this in half your rides and the prescribed interval duration. And then those zone four plus workouts, well, 
you want to kind of sprinkle them in throughout the week. So it's probably going to end up being once or twice a week on your kind of weekly plan. And you don't want to do this when you're tired. You want to make sure you have adequate rest beforehand and also proper recovery after each session. So if you are looking for a training plan, you can get a nice, easy, generic one just with a quick Google search, and that way you can get a nice basic one. But if you want one that's got a bit more to it, then we've done our own in collaboration with the training platform, Training Peaks, that is in the description below. But other training platforms actually give you some training plans too, like Zwift and Sufferfest. But if you want to take it to another step, another step further, you can get hold of a coach and that way they can give you specific training plans for your needs and for your goals. So I hope this video has helped you understand how to use your heart rate to train effectively. If you did find this video useful, please do give it a big thumbs up. Yeah, and why don't you let us know in the comment section below what's your preferred method of monitoring your training. We'd for sure like to know. So get involved in that comment section below and we'll see you in the next video. Well, hey, and don't forget to vote on that poll. Oh yeah, the poll. <laughs>